Hi, art thou a lad? If you are a man, then you may be interested in trying the ketogenic diet for yourself and potentially for changing your blood cholesterol or blood fats or even your blood sugar. Well, that's what we'll cover in this science-based way. Stick around. Learn Your Body, a science-based education. As always, the study we'll be using to glean this information is linked along with my notes and follow-up amendments. Since this is one study and while it will offer some information, you may want to check out the series of studies I've covered on the topic, or if it's up, the final video putting it all together. All of that is linked for thine convenience. With that, let's shed some light on the study at hand. The researchers wanted to know in a strict setting how the ketogenic diet would affect young, active, and inactive men in a variety of measures, including immune cells, thyroid hormone, and other measures, but we'll be focused on cholesterol, blood fats, and blood sugar. Don't worry though, the other information is still attached if you're interested. They recruited nine men to stay in a laboratory for 35 days, so all their meals were created for them, making the study highly rigorous in that regard. To begin, all the participants were put on a standard diet for seven days, so they would have the same diet on the onset. This diet included carbohydrates. Then they also fed it enough to maintain their weight, and during this time the researchers took blood measurements to create a baseline to compare against. After those seven days, the researchers switched all nine men to a strict ketogenic diet, also known as a very low carbohydrate diet that consisted of 20 grams of carbohydrates and 85% of their nutrition coming from fat. Although not explicitly said, the foods consumed were predominantly based in saturated fats. During the following four weeks of the ketogenic diet, the researchers repeatedly took measures every week to compare against the baseline, so the pre-ketogenic values. All right, study design out of the way, what did they find? In line with other studies that we've covered in measures of cholesterol, it increased, but the researchers only measured total and high density lipoprotein associated cholesterols. The total increase, but HDL high density did not change. Interestingly, their fatty acids, also known as fat molecules in the blood, increased, but their triglycerides, another blood fat, decreased. So some interesting divergent results that we'll discuss shortly. The last metric of interest is their blood sugar, which declined. So where does that leave us? Well, let's understand why the results ended up the way that they did, according to the researchers. First, cholesterol levels increased, likely due to the ingestion of saturated fat, which, among other mechanisms, likely reduces the sensitivity of liver cells to blood cholesterol, reducing their ability to modulate their cholesterol dumping into the bloodstream. However, the researchers point out that the diet was high in cholesterol and was low in fiber, which may have led to less cholesterol excretion through the stool and a rather high cholesterol uptake by the intestinal cells into the bloodstream. This may be an added mechanism for the elevated cholesterol in the blood. Triglycerides may have not been elevated and slightly reduced because triglycerides are not free from the intestinal tract after consuming large amounts of fat, but are packed into particles known as chylomicrons to be delivered to various tissues. However, fatty acids may have been elevated because of the body was depending more heavily on the metabolizable fats, which fatty acids are, for energy production since glucose blood sugar levels were low. Speaking of blood sugar levels, it's pretty simple. They were low because these individuals were consuming very low amounts of carbohydrates, so not a real tough one there. In conclusion, this means that young men consuming a ketogenic diet without weight loss, high in saturated fat, will likely see increases in blood cholesterol, reductions in blood fats as measured by triglycerides, and reduced blood glucose or sugar levels. Still, what is one study against many? What say I? If you want a greater strength of evidence, be sure to check out the attached series of studies. Or if it's available, select the final verdict where I put all of this together for you across a multitude of studies. Thanks and speak to you soon.